Okay, so the third part of Core 6b on ERGM will be about the ERGM modeling and results. So, um, to summarize, uh, fitting an ERGM model is looking for the weighted combination of network statistics. So, weighted combination of network statistics is the, proportion, the correct proportion of ingredients to have your network. So, you are looking for the weighted combination of network statistics that will produce a network distribution centered on the observed network. We choose the statistic to include in the model, so we have some intuition, insights, hypothesis to verify, and we type in R the kind of following line here, so our model 1 will be an ERGM model of an observed network network that we want to explain as, a, as, is a, as in a multiple linear regression by the first term 1, the term 2, and the term 3. The function do, does all the work for us, and we have some results that are the parameter values, so the weights of the statistic term 1, term 2, and term 3, and these uh, parameters are given in log odds that we will interpret as log it coefficients. To obtain the odd values, we just have to apply the exponential function. So, let's say I have a network of um, uh, to analyze. I run my uh, my simple model. I try to explain my network G by the the term one edges, so the overall density of the graph, and triad census three, which is just a two star. Then the triad census three is uh, this. Uh, this triad. So it's like a, a out two star. And we have these results. So uh, the coefficient, the parameter of edges is uh, minus 2.2 and the uh, parameter for triad census of uh, kind uh, 0, 21d is 0 0.16. These are the log odds of uh, the parameter values. Another in important uh, result to check is the significance of uh, these estimates. So here uh, it's a simple model and we have found two significant uh, parameter values because of the uh, three little stars and the very low p-value to be uh, in the case of the null hypothesis where this term and this term does not affect at all the structure of G. But uh, log odds are not uh, straightforward to interpret. So the value of uh, these odds are the direct effect of the statistic. So the statistic is, told, is sometimes called predictor. So this is a direct effect, effect, the pure effect, in the sense that you consider that the other effects are held at their current values. So you are just looking at the relative effect, the effect of the term on its own on the overall structure of your network. When you, are, when you have an high value, the statistic uh, to which the parameter is high is likely to be observed in other similar networks. By similar networks, we mean uh, networks with the same node, set, node sets and the, um, a, close, um, a close density, let's say. So when you have a high positive value, you can say that uh, for the parameter of a statistic, you can say that this statistic is more common than expected by chance in the observed network than in any random network of same size. Another uh, simpler way to say that is that uh, the statistic is typical of the observed network. So, as I was saying, results are given in log odds. And log odds is a, a useful way to change a probability to a real value. Probability is between 0 and 1. A log odd map the maps the probability value between uh, minus infinity and plus infinity. So uh, you can say that the probability of observing a statistic is uh, monotonic with the value of the log odd. So high values of log odds me means high probability to observe statistics, low value of uh, log odds, so negative uh, values of log odds, means uh, small probability to observe the statistic. When you take the exponential of these values, you have the number of times 
the statistic is more likely to observe uh, to observe a link in the statistic. So um, ERGM results um, interpretation in the previous case of our simple model with edges and triad census for uh, Outstar 2 gave us these two values, uh, minus 2.2 and uh, 0.16. We take the exponential of these two values and we have uh, 0.10 and uh, 1.17. <coughs> so, by looking at that, we can say that a link belonging to a pattern of two star, so a, a link of this kind, is uh, 1.16 times more common than observed by chance in similar networks of uh, similar networks in sense that um, not too far from our observed network. But still, uh, these values is quite tricky to get. So um, the the simplest way to deal with these values is um, that since it's uh, hard to interpret for more some for some more complicated effects. Here in, in this case it was a little bit simple because a uh, two star is a is a simple pattern. But when you have distribution terms and uh, and so on, it's more difficult to, to see what it means. Uh, just compare the values one to another and see the relative effect, uh, the relative pure effect of the terms compared to the values of the other. And you will uh, interpret them, them as their, their importance of the statistics on the overall shape of the network. Okay, so that's it for interpretation. <coughs> Just remember to compare the values high, low, one to another, instead of trying to uh, transform it into a probability of observing a link, which is uh, more tricky. Um, so you, we have uh, parameter values, but uh, we are not sure that this is sufficient to conclude that the observed network has been properly modeled, because Having a distribution of network close to the graph according, according to some statistics, so according to our ingredients, uh, having a distribution of network close to the observed graph is not the same thing that having an observed network that really look, looks like the distribution of networks that we have with our model. In fact, the statistics you have chosen may not be restrictive enough and will allow a lot of structurally different networks to show similar statistics values. When you have this kind of, uh, of phenomenon, it's called degeneracy. So, to see if we have a good model, we have to check the goodness, the goodness of fit of the model. So, to do that, we will simulate a lot of networks according to the model we have. So we take our model and we, we put the parameter values into a network generator, a, network, a random network generator, and we make a lot of networks. And we observe if the distribution of networks that have been just simulated with this parameter is centered around the observed network. If the observed network is really central in the distribution and the distribution is, uh, is acute, is uh, really well um, narrow around the observed uh, network, it means that our family of networks is, uh, is uh, well constructed. So to do that, uh, we use uh, the goodness of fit function of the ERGM package of R. And this uh, goodness of fit function, we will, will plot the simulated distribution of networks according to some other statistics, some statistics that describes well the network. You can choose your own statistic to describe the network, but there is also some default statistics that uh, give a good idea of um, the distribution of networks you have simulated. On the y-axis, you have the log odds, so the values of uh, your parameters given by uh, ERGM fitting. And on the x-axis, you have the statistic value. So an a current example of a statistic chosen to assess 
how the, the distribution of network is centered around the observed network is the minimum geodesic distance. So in this kind of plot, the, the black line, the black solid line, is the statistics of your network, the network you want to analyze. And around, when you are, when you are lucky, around this solid line, the box plot you see here is the distribution of networks that has been simulated. So here, we have a pretty good fit for this statistic, because we observe that the box plots of the family of networks is follow is following the solid line of the observed network. So according to this statistic, the fit is good. But for the edge-wise shared partners, uh, the fit is less uh, satisfactory. It, uh, it's good around here because the box plots are very thin, but around here the, the fit is not good. There are some other um, uh, vari uh, statistics that are used, for example, degree distribution and triad census. Okay, for, um, for all of the ERGM terms, there is some variance for, uh, for different can kinds of graphs, for directed and directed networks, weighted, bipartite, and multilayered networks. But for, the three, uh, for these three kinds of networks, the models are much more complicated to fit because of the research space. The research space is already very high, uh, very, um, very huge for just binary networks with zero and one on the edge. But for this kind of networks, it's, uh, it's uh, several times uh, more uh, huge. Okay, so in this course we have seen the basic principles of ERGM, of uh, fitting a network via some ingredients called terms and uh, that are fit by um, Monte Carlo Markov chain estimation. We have seen the different kinds of ingredients and we have seen how to deal with the results it produces. This is the end of the course. You can check uh, an excellent tutorial uh, for social networks uh, ERGM on the site of uh, Stanford R Labs uh, here. In the tutorial 6, we will try to make a step-by-step -step introduction to ERGM modeling with the data of Orbis networks. Uh, if you are interested in the um, log likelihood and maximum likelihood expectations that is used to guide the simulation uh, that uh, find for us the parameter values, you can check this, um, these slides who are uh, pretty much clear. Um, I have only put uh, two uh, references, but there are some other in the slides, uh, for the scientific publication uh, about uh, ERGM. And um, that's it for the course uh, 6B. Thank you.